We are live on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Welcome to show number 37. My name is Ty, AK the Flip Man, and I have my partner in crime, Adria. You'll take it over from here. Yay, I got it. Hi guys, welcome, glad you're here. As always, mm, Adria's running a little behind schedule, a little behind, a little, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you all know, we're here every Thursday um, to answer your questions in regards to flipping, whole, flipping wholesaling properties, commercial and or residential, whatever the case, with little to no money of your own. So welcome. Um, little house cleaning here. There are 200 plus videos available to you on YouTube, which are made free of charge for you by Tyler Flipman Taylor. Also, um, this video will be available after we finish recording. It is live now, will not be live later. So the way this works, you post your questions. I read the questions. He answers your questions. Um, I do skip around. Keep in mind, we are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Uh, always tell me where you are, what your location is, because sometimes the answers are better suited to you if I know exactly where you are. Well, if Ty knows where you are. I'm Adria, uh, University of Alabama, home of the Crimson Tide, Roll Tide Nation, just won the national championship. Just going to throw that out there, you know, Roll Tide, and we'll get started. I like to do a little roll call, see where everybody's from, trying something new so y'all guys can help me out. We are still doing that whole Facebook thing, so let me know if the sound is distorted, watered, or whatever the case may be. And what else? Y'all will tell me anything else if, if it's wrong. Um, let's see. Where are you people from? Where are you people at? Let's see who's on Instagram. We got to get better about this. I am got way too much stuff going on. Let's see here. Okay. We're good on Instagram. Got people there. Yay. Hey. See you guys on YouTube. Hmm. Facebook always gives me trouble. There we go. Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Hampton, Virginia, Georgia, Sacramento, Detroit, LB checking in from Charlotte, celebrating the 43rd birthday today. Way to go. Um, let's see who else we have. Happy New Year from Pittsburgh, Sarasota, 757, Virginia. Achilles is in the ATL. Got a lot of y'all in Georgia. <laughs> I, I didn't even mean anything by that, but hey, Georgia, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy, what's wrong, Joseph? I see, what's the face for? Vietnam, like that. Vietnam, North Carolina. Okay, I see your question, Skylar. I will, that will be one of the first ones I ask. How about that? Um, what's up, Deshaun Jackson from Denver, Colorado? Okay, let's see here. I don't see too many people on Instagram. They joined a little late. They always late. Let's see here and let's see what's happening on Facebook. Now, if anybody is on both that's on YouTube, because I'm looking at that right now, tell me what Facebook sounds like, looks like. How about that? What's up, Kelly R? Eight five O P Cola, Florida in the house. Y'all putting them area codes representing, and I, don't, I have no idea. Two o five, I guess. Nothing's wrong with Georgia, Sydney, other than you lost. But okay, that's that's neither here nor there. All right, Ty, what you looking like? Uh, just one more second. One more second. Okay. Guys, tag a friend, tell a friend to come over. Ooh, there's New York, Little Rock, Arkansas, and Maryland. Nobody on both YouTube and Facebook? I guess not. Let's see here. I guess I have to look my stuff. on Facebook. Hmm? Somebody already posted a question on Facebook. They read it. Yeah. I was just trying to make sure they didn't give any. Um... Okay. Yeah, we, we, I'm ready now. Okay. I'm ready too. Well, let's get started, guys. Well, let's see here. I had the very first thing Carlos had a question on 
YouTube. And can you all hear, well, let me just make sure. Can they hear Adria on uh, Facebook? Making sure Jesse says uh, the sound was good. Thanks, Jesse. Yay. Yeah, because everybody, oh. Okay, guys, we're working out kinks. There's my Instagram people coming through. We're working out kinks on Facebook. As you know, try something a little bit different. Bear with us. Hopefully it works out well. Don't sound like we're underwater. Oh, I see it. Craig Thomas is on. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. All right, ready to rock and roll? Oh, yeah, ready to rock. Okay. So, Carlos Colson wants to know, what do you do when a deal does not work? Do you just tear up the contract? Well, you'll go back to the seller and um, ask for more. T well, I'm assuming he means he ran out of time. It's, I'm assuming that's what he means. But uh, um, you'll go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, go back to the seller and ask for more time, and they give it to you, or you go back to the seller and ask for more time, and they don't. If they don't, um, uh, thank them for their time or whatever. If they do, then you extend it. But um, that's pretty much it, and that's if, if I understand the question correctly. Okay, let's see here. Um, <laughs> what up against the grain representing that 757? Okay, mm hmm, sounds great. Yes, looking sporty, representing. Okay, so we have Skylar Weber, Weber, who's has, who says, bandit signs don't seem to be getting me any calls. Um, where, where, is he, where is he on YouTube or Facebook? On YouTube. All right. And it might be a piece of a question. And the signs don't seem to be getting me any calls, putting them up on intersections in Minnesota. How many have you put up? Uh, what do your signs say? You know, all of that will factor in. Where did you place your signs? All of that will factor in. Okay. Um, on Facebook, I have a question from Hakeem. All right. Hakeem says, I've been putting out signs on and off for two years. Um, recently, I bought 500. Woo, big number. And have been putting out 100 a week. It's working really good. But now I have had two police officers text me and somebody from the Department of Transportation. Has this ever happened to you? Yeah, sounds like you clown. You are clowning, which is good. That means you are being... Yeah. In Gator, but um, uh, yeah, it, it's happened. You know, it, it's happened recently too. I had a, I set my crazy self up and had an in-depth conversation with the guy, <laughs> whatever. But like with most cities, well, I don't know about most cities, but in Birmingham, metropolitan Birmingham, or what you would call Greater Birmingham, you know, you have all the surrounding cities. So this was in one of the surrounding cities that make up Metro Birmingham, Center Point, to be exact. Well, you know what? It wasn't even the city itself which Center Point has called me. It was uh, the guy that handles the um, that part of the county or whatever. It's for, I guess, uh, whatever, you know, as far as the county workers that do the, I uh, guess, the outdoor stuff, I guess you would call it. And um, anyway, long story short, um, um I would probably be a little bit more tactful than what I'm doing. Sounds like you're really blanketing your city, which is good. Hopefully you're making some money from it or whatever, but um, maybe a little bit, scale it back a little bit, be visible, but invisible. All right. I don't, I don't think you've ever said that before. I, I, that you've ever had to tell somebody to scale it back. Don't put up no more signs. Wait a you minute. Know, I, I'm not telling him not to put up anymore, but he's probably just going straight out, just straight on all main drags with, you know, the high traffic areas. He's not being yeah. probably tactful with it. He's just being just blunt. Hey, screw y'all. Hey, these are my bad signs. Take it or leave it or whatever. So, um, you know, you have to adjust, you know, just does it does. You don't want to call too much, too much ruckus. All right, so let's go to Instagram. Ty, this is from One Slow, says, Ty, I hung signs up in my area, but I feel like they're being taken down too fast. 
No calls yet. Should I put them up in a different city? Well, uh, similar to on the flip side of what we just answered, um, in this situation, are you putting your signs in areas where signs don't exist already? If that's the case, I would always highly recommend that you figure out where signs already exist in your market. Sometimes you're going to have to get outside of your comfort zone. Um, where I put a lot of my signs is 20, 30 minutes away from where I actually live or whatever. So because if I put them where I live, I'm going to be wasting my time and money because they're not going to stay up long enough to provide the, the number of calls that I need to afford to make sense of my money and time. So it's about scouting out your market and seeing where signs already exist. You can test uh, areas where signs don't exist already. But when I say test, I mean like five, 10 signs and see how long they stay up and just make your decision from there. So. Condi, what up from Texas? And welcome, Royalty on Instagram. First live webinar for her. Um, on Instagram, the question is, I just looked at a house and it only needs cosmetics. Um, it's worth 73000 ARV. What should I offer? Sounds like he might be missing some information for you, huh? Well, um, it says cosmetics. So uh, on something he said with well, ARV of seventy three. Now, this is not enough information, obviously, but it's the, for the sake of trying to answer the question, um, I would say in the 20s uh, would be the, the max. You know, obviously, you want to try to get it cheaper, but in the 20s for sure. Okay. Um, rookie question from Garrett, who says he messaged you about 15 minutes ago. Um, but he says, I've recently started picking up info on wholesaling, I keep seeing in your videos that there is no cash down needed and no credit. How is that possible? Yeah, he just texted me and I told him to ask a question here uh, on the flip. And I'm glad you joined us, uh, uh, Garrett. But uh, basically, man, you're, you're at the you're at the beginning stages of with that particular question, which is a legitimate question, because when people hear uh, no money down, no credit, it really means that but it means on the actual purchase of the house. And it can mean and finding the actual deal itself. Uh, but what that simply means, you have to understand the process of a real estate transaction. Uh, most real estate, well, not most, um, well, all legitimate real estate transactions start with an actual purchase and sale agreement, a contract. And that's between a seller and a buyer. All right. Now that does, that contract doesn't, give you ownership of the property but it does give you equitable interest within the property within the short time frame that you and the seller agreed upon to allow you to go through the process of purchasing the house so in a nutshell basically once you place that place that property on the contract legally the seller shouldn't be able to sell that property to anyone else as long as you're keeping up your end of the bargain per se according to the agreement so in that time frame, say you go with 30 days, which is normally what most people do, 30 or 30, 30 or 45 days is for the time frame that you'll buy the house or close on the house, which are the same things. Um, someone can basically buy your contract from your normal, well, not normal, it's going to be a cash buyer. So they'll basically buy you out of the deal. So that's why when we say you don't need any cash or credit, the cash buyer is the one that's going to fund the deal. He's just basically going to buy you out of the deal. And we normally do that with an assignment of contract. It's a little more detailed than that, but I'm just trying to give you a, a layman's way of understanding it, that someone is basically going to buy your contract from you that you've negotiated with the actual seller. Now, the only reason that that cash buyer will even be interested in buying your contract is I'm, it's not really the term you use, but trying to simplify it for you is because you've, you negotiated a very attractive deal. Now that'll vary depending on the, the, the house itself, but just to give you some easy numbers, a house may be uh, worth $100,000 in excellent condition, meaning fixed up. But for whatever reason, you can get it for $30,000. That's the difference between thirty dollars and $100,000 is a $70,000 spread. So uh, that makes the property attractive, assuming that the repairs are not that 
uh, astronomical as far as cost. So that's why it would be of interest to an actual cash buyer because they want to buy it to make money from it. But there's enough money there that you negotiate enough equity there in the property that will allow you to make money off of it too. That's why you can make several thousand dollars because they won't want you to have. So that's why you'll see a lot of different ways to do this business. Some people say, uh, find your buyers for us first and go look for, go find what they're looking for. But I was taught to find the deal first and the buyers will come if you find great deals. Both work is just, I know, and you'll soon find out it's easy to find buyers. It's because it's not difficult to give away money. Whereas trying to get someone to give you money, those are sellers. That's the hard part. So that's why I focus on the hard part in most of the stuff that I talk about. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay. Um, Instagram, royalty. Where do I begin finding the homes to wholesale? Well, that's a basic question also. You sound like you're just beginning also. There are a lot of ways you can go about trying to find, find deals. That's why we were just speaking about banded signs. I don't know if you heard that part of the first couple of questions, but the reason these guys are putting, or I don't know if they're females or not, but the reason they're putting out uh, actual signs is to get sellers to call them and they just let the numbers play out. If enough people call you, you'll eventually run into a deal that has found you. Now, there are ways to actually find deals. Uh, it is a little bit more difficult to do it that way when you're actually uh, cold calling or doing some research without actually spending money. But with Bandit Sanders, you're talking about spending a few hundred dollars to uh, try to make thousands. So uh, finding deals, you can go from Bandit Sanders, direct mail, social media, internet, obviously the same things. Um, you can uh, target for sale by owner properties. You can, you can target properties that are listed by real estate agents if you know what you're doing. You can tar target uh, tired landlords when you see a property for rent. There's sometimes going to be a property manager involved, but those are several ways that you could possibly try to find deals. Hopefully that answers the question because it's just such a broad question, a broad question with, with a broad answer. Yeah, that was for royalty. Yeah. She was, this was her first um, webinar. So um, it's cool though. You know, some people are, don't ask and they need to know because some, some of our subscribers are starting from scratch. So that's awesome. That's good. Uh, we, yeah. we welcome, we, we welcome the scratchers. Scratchers. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway, and there's plenty of females in here. What you talking about? Anyway, but. Well, well no, I'm not saying females are scratch. I meant people that are starting from scratch. Yeah, I, I know. Anyway, on let's Facebook, go. got some questions on Facebook. You ready? All right. What we got? What we got? Okay, so let's go to Jesse's question. Jesse Ramsey asks, can you give a quick explanation of how you do rehab costs? Um, well, you always have to think in terms, whenever you're trying to wholesale, you have to think in terms of, um, well, a part of your equation or your formula is understanding what it will cost for that cash buyer that you're trying to wholesale it to uh, what what will they encounter as far as rehab costs. Now, um, that's going to vary, but you just need a ballpark. Now, the way I was taught to do it, to do it in five and five thousand five thousand dollar increments. So, uh, a couple of ways you can go about it. There's some cap free calculators. Remodelingcalculator.org is a is a is a service that you can use online. You want to try to bypass them offering you contractors. And then when you first get to the actual site, uh, there are going to be some other sites. You know what? I need to check Home Depot. I couldn't imagine them not having some form of a calculator on their site, Home Depot and Lowe's or uh, whatever. But a lot of times it just boils down to the square footage of, of rooms as far as flooring, uh, countertops, <clears throat> obviously the bathrooms. As far as painting, you know, they can figure out all that stuff if they have the square footage of, um, of, of flooring walls, obviously, and, and windows. And even with the roof, they can give you a good idea what things cost. And so if you spend some time there and bring in some measurements, they'll give you a good idea how to figure it out. But once you get those numbers, then uh, the way I would approach it is, is that obviously, and they may be able to give you some uh, estimates on repairs. I mean, as far as labor, 
But uh, the site that I'm recommending, remodelingcalculator.org, I'm trying to say that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that's the URL. It's pretty good at giving out, but I think it's somewhat, it, it overestimates, which that's good, that's fine, or whatever. But um, it, it's a good source to give you an idea of whenever you're trying to uh, calculate repairs. But I still, to this day, 15 years in the game, I still just break it down into five, five thousand dollar increments, you know, because you're not going to be exact. You just need a ballpark number uh, in order to analyze your deal to see if you actually have an opportunity there. Um, so, but there's certain ways to do that. Now you could you could do this. You could uh, take out uh, get a contractor to go out with you on a couple of properties. Um, might be wasting their time, so you may want to give them a little something. And for them to give you an idea of what things will cost. And uh, you can pretty much use that as a uh, blueprint to do so. Now, square footage will factor in and how how extravagant you may go with a house or not so extravagant with a house, depending on the area and what's going to be done with the house. Obviously, in a higher end uh, house, you know, it's going to spend more money. A countertop in a D area, D is in dog, versus a B area is going to cost different. Uh, they're going to be different prices in a lot of cases. So, Said all that to say, you just need a ballpark number. You don't have, there's no exact number because one contractor will give you uh, one quote versus another and you want the exact same thing done, so. All right, um, Jesse, hopefully, hopefully that answers your question. Sticking <laughs> with Facebook, sticking yeah. with Facebook, we're going to go to um, Emmanuel's question, Emmanuel Carter. Um, has a question in regards to two vacant commercial properties. Um, they're located in a shopping center um, that he's been researching. One was a giant, I'm assuming like a food giant or something, the other a Kmart. Wondering if I could flip even though they aren't standalone buildings, but with a shopping center. That is a, um, uh, obviously, I, I take for granted what I know and what others know. If, uh, I'm gonna ask you. I'm see what you think, Adrian. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm uh, again taking it for granted. But if you, if, if uh, let's say you, you, may, you're familiar with a lot of the same. But okay, you know where we go by the t-shirt set, right? Correct. Okay, if you seen two vacant spots in there, would you think those two vacant spots are for sale or for lease? Or you for think lease. would you think they're separated from that the rest of that shopping center? No, they're for lease. The shopping center is as a whole, and those it, it's a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not those two spaces that you're looking at. Uh, what, what was his name? Emmanuel. Yes. Those are not separated in most cases. Sometimes they're, but it's, it's not often. Those are not set. It's the entire shopping center. Those are just two vacant spaces. Look at it like an apartment building. You may have a hundred apartment units and two of them are vacant, it's not that you can, well, in most cities, now in New York, you could probably just buy the actual apartment itself, but in most cities, those two spaces are not for sale. You have to buy the other 98 units. This is the same thing with a shopping center when you see it. It's the entire shopping center, not those two vacant spaces. Those are just vacant apartment spaces, if you want to look at it that way. It's not, it's not, the those two are for sale is either all or nothing it you know those are just two available spaces that they will lease they won't sell those spaces separately from the rest of the shopping center and, and i get that a lot i guess people don't know i guess I, I take that for granted most people don't know that so hopefully enough people will see this and i maybe need to reiterate that it's the entire shopping centers not just those two spaces okay um, going to YouTube, off, off Roader um, says he has a tired landlord that wants to sell his Mexican restaurant. He said he leases it for $900 a month, and the lease agreement is for three years. Don't know what to offer. He's very motivated. He purchased it for $40,000. Um, so, well, so he says there's Mexican restaurants. So is the owner running the Mex Mexican restaurant is he, or is he leasing it to a, someone that's running, someone else that's running the Mexican restaurant? If I'm trying to understand 
I don't know. That I didn't get because it says I have a tired landlord that wants to sell well, his well, restaurant. Well, that well, well, yeah. well, he answered. I'm sorry. We didn't listen good. He said, I, I have a tired landlord that wants to sell his I, I guess the question is, I have a tired landlord that wants to sell his property where it's being leased by a Mexican restaurant. Oh, yeah. Ooh, is, is, is that what it is? No, that's, that's the way I read it. That's the way I read it. Okay. So it's already generating income of $900 a month. And Alf Roder has done his research and has said, "How much does he want to sell it for? It's only is he's only leasing it for nine hundred. Yeah, he bought it for forty thousand. Um, and uh, okay, another post. Very motivated to sell. I know he bought the place for forty thousand. He's leasing it for nine hundred. Very motivated. Um, it's a commercial property. He just doesn't know what to offer." There you go. Well, the other thing is you need to find out what is what is the tenant responsible for? Are they responsible for all their utility utilities? What repairs is the uh, is the landlord re responsible for? What repairs are the tenant responsible for? Uh, are there any uh, uh, other? Again, that, those are going to be two of the main factors. Also, you want to know what the taxes and the insurance are on the property. Is he paying the taxes and insurance, or the tenant paying the taxes and insurance? All that will factor in on 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 what the potential there is for the deal because what you're trying to do is figure out the NOI, the net operating income, and that's simply taking the gross uh, annual income and subtracting the gross annual expenses to come up with a net operating income, which is also called NOI. All right, on Facebook we have a question from Mr. Eric, who is our movie quote genius man i'll have one problem go ahead though oh goesness gracious no his question is tied well he said he called you earlier but he wanted to know what size bandit signs uh, do you use and is it based on area no but nine by 24 right yeah, yeah normally nine by 24 is what i like to roll with uh nine by 24. bam she ready mm -hmm. she ready i'm ready ah! yeah i'm ready <laughs> This size, people, nine by 24. Yep. Stick with simple colors, blue and red, if you can afford two colors. Otherwise, go with, come on, are you supposed to be helping me out? Oh, one, one color, one color, red or blue. Red or blue. Mm -hmm. I got two colors, though. Okay, keep it simple. We buy houses as is, not necessarily needed. Would have had more room if I had to just let the we buy houses, um, selling days, and put your number. Represent the 205, home of the Crimson Tide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to throw that in there. But oh, 9 by 24, Eric. 9 by 24. Hope that helps you out. Um, let's see here. Sticking with Facebook, the next question is going to be from... Ryan, Ryan Garnett. And he says, what's up, Flipman? I have a land. I have a land in wholesaling. This is also my first deal in wholesaling. Not really sure what the question was, but maybe asking, can you wholesale land? You want to explain that? Um, yeah, you can wholesale land. Um, residential, obviously commercial. Uh, it's a different animal. Uh, because especially with uh, residential, I'm assuming he's referring to residential. Uh, a lot of time, residential land can virtually be, I hate to use the word worthless, but um, in some areas, you probably couldn't give it away. And then some areas, obviously, it's going to be a lot more valuable. So it just depends on where it is. There's a lot more speculation in land. So there's going to be fewer buyers in a lot of cases, but one of the positives about it, you don't have to show it. <laughs> they just tell them the address and they drive by it and they can view it at their own leisure and do their own due diligence on it. So it's a different animal. Like with anything, um, you get it cheap enough, you can probably find a buyer for it. And it's going to be all relative, all relative to the, which are the most famous the famous word, but in threes, location, location, location. Shine, shine, my sign ain't ugly. What you talking about? Talking uh, about some biz, that ugly sign again. Whatever. It get oh, called. Oh, mm. oh, wow. Hey, 
H A T E R. <laughs> anyway, on Instagram, Slow X asks, How do you know you're ready to scale your business and start hiring VAs to start running your business? Maybe he meant upscale. I don't I don't know. Well, no, it means, well scale simply means you just take it to the next level as far as yeah. trying to uh, put in a process where you need others to assist you. Uh, that's, I guess, the definition that refers to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But um, it really is going to boil down to how much how much of your time is being taken up, and 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 because you're taking on you've taken on so much that you need help to do more, to be able to create more business. So it, it's really that you, only you will know that. Some people will quote unquote scale earlier than what they need, in my opinion. Um, so uh, that's going to be on the individual on when they should. Uh, add others to assist them with doing more deals. But at the end of the day, that's that's what that's what you're doing. The more deals you can do, the more money you can make. So that's going to be individual based, in my opinion. Okay. Hey, Carrie on Facebook. Welcome. She says she loves it. Love you too. You were here last week, so are we better? She can give me a better comparison. Let me know, Carrie, what you think. Um, going on YouTube, Speak to Inspires asked, at what point do we get our money? Is it the seller that pays us the difference between both contracts? Please, how does the payment process work? That's a good question. When you get well, your yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, well, basically, you're going to get your money whenever whenever uh, everyone else gets, well, when the seller gets their money. Um the deal go in most cases, sometimes it may be a day or two delayed, depending on what's what's going on. But in most cases, uh, it all happens the same day whenever it's actually closes, meaning whenever the seller conveys ownership over to the buyer. And the buyer has obviously funded the deal in order for that to happen. So, you know, the funds are, are, are uh, uh, dispersed then. Uh, between you and the seller, you know the buyer's not getting any money because they're buying. So it's whenever the actual is closed on, when the seller and the buyer exchange, when the seller conveys ownership over to the buyer, so that's when you get normally paid. Sometimes it may be delayed or whatever, but in most cases it's the same day. All right. Um, let's see here. Rodney Simons or Simmons on YouTube. I work for the electric company. And I come across vacant houses on a weekly basis. Oh, that sounds good. Anybody that has a job like the city workers, the electric company is riding around all day. Woo, you get to drive for dollars on the clock. Anyway, let's see here. I know they're vacant because I'm turning them off. Do you think it's wise to leave a business card? Uh, yeah, it couldn't hurt um, at all. It couldn't hurt. Uh, hopefully your business card says something about referrals. Uh, so yeah, most definitely. Well, who he referring to? He referring him to himself. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe I didn't understand the question. And he does what now? He works for Alabama Power. We just gonna use that. He works for the oh, power company, oh, and he going and cutting off boxes. You know he what I thought you said? It. You know, what? I was too busy trying to post uh, somebody's comment on Facebook. Yeah, you know, I, I got like my little toy here, but uh, especially since you're on live with me this time, we get figured out the audio, but. He works for the power company. Right. He used his job to his advantage because right. he's already out there in the field seeing vacant houses and et cetera. There you go. Most definitely. Now, I would be careful with that. Um, someone seeing you do that, you know, there's some fools out there. I actually had a guy call me. Oh, speaking of that, from me sending out uh, some mail to flip with, you know, the Got dog and I ain't got it in here tonight. Oh. You ain't ready. Oh, you my ain't God. ready. Wow. I'm a, but anyway. I'm going um, to call you Georgia Tie. You well, ain't ready. After sending him a postcard with the picture of his property on there, this Asian guy barely could understand what he was saying, but I got the point. He said that was unprofessional. He does not want his business out there like that or whatever. If I'm going to send him something about his property, it needs to be in an enclosed envelope 
So I won't say that anymore, which I don't even know who it was. I can't even tell him. I couldn't even, I couldn't understand him enough to even remove him from the list uh, of mailers. But anyway, my point being, there's some fools out there. So be careful by putting those business cards on people's properties and you're in uniform for, you know, working for someone else. So be mindful of that is, is basically what I'm saying, because there's some, what I consider unreasonable people, they don't have anything else to do but something like that to call your job to say, hey, this guy is soliciting while he's on the job. So keep that in mind. That's that's good information. So yeah, maybe not leaving it while he's on the clock, but remembering where it is and coming back to it later off the clock. Boom, you're brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so smart. You smart. You kind. You important. Yes, I am. Thank you. And I slid that joke in that you ain't here. They heard it, but that's all right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. So sticking with the newbie question, I, I like these newbie questions. It's the beginning of the year and a lot of people are trying to do something, you know, to supplement their income, start something fresh, that whole new me, new me BS. Okay. That's fine. Um, but Jonathan Tanks asked, so how do you know how much each house is worth? Well, Jonathan, um, there's a method to the madness. We call it uh, ARV. It, it means after repair value. Don't get confused with the word repair in there. But what it simply means, what will the house appraise for? This is my flip man, um, country boy, ghetto hood uh, definition. Basically, what will the house appraise for fixed up, right? So uh, that's where you start. Uh, and the way that's done by an actual professional appraiser, these are the way how appraised for what are you doing? Right. So uh, that's where you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Don't, don't mess with nothing. We doing good. <laughs> Why are you fooling with it? stuff? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, they always start with uh, seven. Don't mess with that. We don't look good. <laughs> Why did you pull with that? I didn't do it on purpose. It's, I was trying to. I'll stop. Okay, we good. All right. Uh, basically, what they do is they compare similar size houses um, within a. Uh, well, it can be up to a mile radius within a certain time frame, 90 days, six months, 12 months. And they look at houses that are sold in those time frames to fit those, uh, those, those basic parameters or, or criteria or whatever. So, uh, so they come up with sales prices. They call them comparable sales. Same thing as they are B technically. So, uh, so once you figure that out, then now you have an opportunity. Well, your goal is to now, based on the price that the seller gives you, also based on the, the condition of the property, which I spoke about it earlier with Jess's question, um, you come up with an idea of what is a deal or not. A good video you can go look at uh, that's mine is, is titled um, Top Three ways to calculate ARV. That's A as in apple, R as in rabbit, B as in, <laughs> B as in Victor. Some people say ABR, ARB as in boy, <laughs> but it's ARV. So, uh, but yeah, that's a good video that I, I suggest that you go look up a man on YouTube. Uh, top three ways to calculate ARV. All right, Jonathan, that's right. Top three ways to calculate the ARV. A is in Alabama, R is in Roll Tide, and V as in Victorious. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting to say that, way. I couldn't wait. He said, don't well, be missing. Most of these people, so many people don't know what you're talking about. You, you're assuming that everybody knows what you're talking about. Some people don't watch college football, man. So explain everybody to them. Everybody knows who Alabama Crimson Tide. They, they know. College football, national championship. Yeah, they, they know. Okay, all right. Well, that's, okay. Well, there you go then. If you don't know, you're living in a hole somewhere. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so Markelly on YouTube, Markelly Upson, 
He says, hey, my question, yeah, it did get pushed up, but I found it. He says, if I'm relying on the buyer's closing attorney to close the deal, when and how do I give the EMD to the seller and receive EMD from the buyer? Well, you should have already given the EMD to the seller before you even got to a buyer. So once you find a buyer, the buyer submits it to you or the title company or closing attorney. So that's the process. Okay, let's see here. Jesse says he ordered his mail to flip campaign today. As a matter of fact, thank you. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Let us know how that works out for you. Um, yes, Jessica Brown has a question on Facebook. Let me find old Jessica. Yep, Jessica with the K. Mm -hmm. Jessica Brown. Okay, Jessica with the K. Okay. He says, I went to a fortune builders workshop this past weekend. My question is, do you have a system for wholesaling? And oh, I should have read it first. And how do you get your ARV? Well, she's new. Welcome, Jessica. And I'm sorry, I should have read the question all the way through, but he actually just answered that. So hopefully what, you got to hear you, that. What was the question? I, I didn't get it. What, what was the weekend? How do you get your ARV? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully uh, you, you saw that. I, I just answered that, Jessica. But uh, yeah, you want to, uh, you can go to um, YouTube and do a search for a top uh, three ways to calculate ARV. Okay. Sticking with Facebook, Starlet Moore has a question. Um, she says, no deal yet. That's okay. It's coming, Starlet. She says she posted 100 bandit signs. She received four phone calls. Two were from unmotivated sellers. Uh-oh. The other two were from towns telling me to take down my signs. My solution was to buy more signs and target different neighborhoods. Any other suggestions? Uh, most definitely. You're, you're doing the right thing. Again, uh, as I spoke of, spoke of before, uh, Starlet, more. Um, scout your area to see where other signs exist. And be, just, just think outside of the box. Uh, don't... We want you want a few on some main traffic on some main streets where a lot of traffic, but the the side streets that enter on to those streets can be very uh, productive for you. Also, uh, ask through drive-throughs. You know, all drive-throughs won't uh, allow you to place signs as far as the visibility and what and, and what you should look for when you do that. Whether it's a fast food drive through or Walgreens, CVS, they have drive throughs normally. Uh, sometimes, well, obviously, banks have drive throughs And what you're looking for is somewhere where I can place my sign where they are forced to see it either where they're going to uh, place their order. I'm talking about fast food now. Uh, where they're going to pick up their order or they're going to exit the property. So if you can place a sign there to position, uh, uh, do so. Also, you want to, uh, I'm not sure if you're close to a freeway, off a of freeway exit. <clears throat> Those are, are, are really good. Um, also, um, uh, in shopping centers like Walmart, Target, Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, uh, the exits of those, uh, just shopping centers in general. So you just put one out there, you know, so you don't want to go crazy. Just put one on the stop sign. I use cable ties. I just tie one to a stop sign. A lot of times those will last a long time, as long as you don't go crazy with just point one there. A lot of a lot of traffic comes through those those uh, those destination places when you start talking about Target, Walmart, uh, sometimes grocery stores, at say Home Depot, Lowe's, or just large shopping centers in general. So just think outside the box, you know, just don't automatically feel hey, I gotta put them on all busy streets because a lot of times those are gonna be the first. Uh, place, places that they take them down from, you know, th those are the low hanging fruit. So you might want to put them up, you know, you want your fruit to be a little higher, so it's a little, <laughs> little more difficult for them to spot it or whatever. So, uh, but don't stop it, you know, keep testing. Some of it's just testing. And then don't, hey, don't sleep on the direct mail option, you know, mail to flip.com, check it out, do a search on YouTube for it. And um, I'll show you what I mean by why it's a good alternative. Uh, or good add-on. It doesn't have to be an alternative good add-on. You could do both. Okay. Um, Tim has a question on Facebook, and I'm going to tie it into Roger's question on YouTube. So Roger Bickley 
and Tim Riker. Um, if I'm wholesaling, do I pay for the title search? And Tim's question is, do you have a video on when to check for clear title? Do you check as soon as you get house under contract or let the cash buyer do that? So who pays for it and when is it checked? Especially when you're starting out, I would recommend just wait until you get a waiting until you get a buyer because a lot of times they will dictate where the property is being closed. So normally that's going to be where the property, the title is going to be initiated from as far as pulling the title. And so in most cases, your buyer is going to pay for that stuff. Now it's all negotiable, but in a lot of cases, they're going to pay for it because of the extremely good deal that you're offering to them. So I would just wait until I get a buyer, let them handle it. But if it's a situation where uh, it may be that uh, maybe you have a buyer that's just their first time ever doing the deal. They just have the cash money to do the deal. Then that's when you would still wait until you have a buyer committed. And then if, even if you've never done a deal for that's when you start shopping around and see who can close your deal. A lot of them won't be receptive to what you're trying to do. That's fine. If you're in a large enough market, you know, they're playing up title companies or closing attorneys that will do it. Don't, don't be discouraged. Just make sure you know how to understand how to explain what you're trying to do correctly, which I give away the clothing detail sheet that I've used for mm, the, probably 14 out of the 15 years I've been doing this. You can get a copy of that, which I don't promote that enough through free clothing, uh, dot, uh, dot com. I don't promote all the stuff I need. Free clothing dot, dot com, flippinart.com, flipman.net, private money list.net. RealPOF.com, <laughs> MailToFlip.com, FundMyNextDeal.com. <laughs> I'm about to centralize all this stuff, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, we spoke that had our uh, had our girl Renikia on uh, this week's uh, Flippinar, but uh, she's been under the weather, and uh, so I'm pretty sure she'll be on uh, next week. But uh, we got some people funded, you know. So if you're in the pipeline and she's instructed you to do something follow through um got people funded so that could be you also starting from zero you got to start somewhere building on that part of it if you're interested in uh trying to get funds to do flips if that's your if that's what you want to try to do or accomplish in the future so fundmynextdeal.com just follow the prompts uh you sure after you go to get to my website which is fundmynextdeal.com submit your information you'll get to her site follow the instructions there if you don't see the return email, it's probably in your spam box. It takes anywhere from three to five business days for her to get back to you. Uh, so just follow up with me if you haven't heard from her and I, I can I can get you in touch with her by phone if you went through the process itself. So fundmynextdeal.com. Uh, okay, um, someone has a question in regards to the mail to flip. How do they get the pictures? Who uh, you mean? Well, the question was from a YouTube subscriber and um, asked, how do they get the pictures to put on the postcard? Do we have to provide them? The answer is no, but. No, they, 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 they basically just use Google Maps. Uh, Google Maps is a, uh, allows pretty much any company to pull their, their images of properties uh, from their API, from their service. So that's how uh, the images are pulled. They, their software is designed to do all that for you. As I said, I mentioned in the video that I did on that, I actually thought about, well, I tried to do it myself and I just couldn't figure out a way to do it efficiently as far as time and cost or whatever. So when I saw this, when they reached out to me, bingo, Kino, if you know the movie I'm referring to, you know which one that is? No, I don't. I apologize. I'm not moving. Anybody know the one I'm Eric? saying? Kingo. Kingo. Where's, where's <laughs> Eric Carney? Eric, if you could help me out here, please. Let me know exactly what movie that comes from so I seem smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> MLC Homes on YouTube. What do you do if the seller has a tenant and has had rent issues in the past, but they're caught up now? Should I put a clause in the contract or does this shake up the deal? Um, when he says they've had trouble in the past, meaning they had tra having trouble with the tenant uh, not paying? Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, they probably need to get them, move them out of there. So it's to, uh, now, number one, it has to be a really good deal. 
probably better than normal because of the potential of a squatter from that tenant. Now, what I would do is being proactive, I'll just go ahead and uh, I know it's, it's, it's introverted that I am, but I like I like money better than my introvertness, if that's a word. Um, you you got to be proactive and offer the tenant um, some money to move out. You know, they only get the money once they actually move out. But, you know, you have to time it around the time you close on it or whatever. So that's what I would be proactive. But again, it starts from how attractive is the deal it needs to be a very good deal for a buyer to want to fool with that so um that's what i would do especially if they already have a history of not paying well but that's probably why the seller is motivated to sell there we go a tired landlord it's always preach those, those are going to be the, the largest group of one type of a seller motivated seller is going to be tired landlord so i would try to be proactive and start trying to get them to move out asap All right. Um, let's see here. Marcel on YouTube um, has a question. Her question is for Houston, but I have a ditto for Tampa as well. I'm a beginner in wholesaling, but my market seems to be saturated. Um, I see we buy houses signs everywhere, kind of discouraging. Should I just try to work a different area other than Houston? Houston is what the fourth largest city in the country population or a land mass or a combination of both somewhere in there and somewhere in there. Dude, it, there's no such thing as being oversaturated in a city like that. There's no such thing. Put your signs out also. Do some direct mail marketing. Do, be against the grain on what everybody else is doing in your in your market. Mail to flip.com just to to, to what I'm offering. But uh but get your signs out there that's a good thing i would just be smiling like a cheetah if i if i was in houston started going to uh do business there and i seen bandit signs everywhere that means i can put mine out also get in the game get in the game mcdonald's sell hamburgers wendy's burger king crystals hardy's carl jr's and that doesn't even include the mom and pop but all of them make money get in the game man that makes sense Yes, enough out there for everybody. Yeah, that's a that huge thing. Can't get it all. Not at all. Um, it, it's out there. But on the same token, keep in mind that when you put your bandit signs out there, if they're calling you, they're calling somebody else too. So you might have to be a little bit more proactive and staying on top of it. That's the only way you will run into an error, don't you think? Possibly. Yeah, yeah. You need to be on it now. You know, people call you, you need to, you know, be on it, Adrian. You need to be on it when they call you. I see what you did there. I, I ooh, did y'all hear that? He slow away, just threw me all the way under the bus, the rug. I, yeah, okay. R roll tide. Okay. That fixes everything in this city. If you don't know, you're having a bad day, roll tide. Y'all seen that commercial? You seen the commercial for that? Roll tide fixes it all. Mm -hmm. Car got repossessed. Roll tide. You kicked out the house. Roll tide. Sister just passed. Roll tide. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, um, Corey says Renikia is awesome. Obviously, that's somebody else who got a deal funded. Good deal. I think Corey is one of the ones. Yeah, I think he is. Corey? Okay. Um, let's see here. Facebook, please. Facebook. Chris Avizo has a question. This is going to be directing me. I have a lot more questions on YouTube. I'm I'm working, y'all. I, I get it. Okay. How do you buy a house from a seller under foreclosure? Oh, wait a minute. Hangover. No, 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 no. Not, not Funko Kingo? No, no. Bingo Kino. Not, Bingo not. Kino. Eric, you ain't no help. Okay. No. Back to Chris's question. How do you buy a house from a seller under foreclosure? When he says under foreclosure, I mean, I guess he means um, it hasn't been foreclosed on. They're behind in payment, so that would be considered pre-foreclosure. Um, it, it depends. If the equity is already there, then you just treat it just like a normal deal. But if you have to build equity via a short sale, then that's a whole nother ball game in itself. That's a process. 
that you have to submit documents uh, with the seller's help. Uh, so the banks say, hey, you know, you owe 100000 but we'll take whatever, uh, 50000 uh, or you, And that may take 30 to 90 days for them to even come back with that answer. But they may say 100000 and you owe, and, but you owe 100000 but we'll take 95. And you spent those three months just to get that price back of 95. So that's the risk you're taking. I assume that's what he means. But if he's referring to um, if the property's already been foreclosed on, then it's an REO, a real estate owned, meaning uh, it's owned by the lender, a bank, a mortgage company, or whatever. So now in that situation, that's a different ballgame because now you got a real estate agent involved in most cases and it's just a listed property. And you make an offer, you know, through the real estate agent, and they're going to want. $1,000 earnest money minimum in most cases, uh, and they're going to approve of funds. You know, everything's negotiable, but it's just a little bit more difficult doing those types of deals. They're not going to allow you to do an assignment, so you're going to have to be creative, and you're going to have to have the right type of buyer because it's not like foreclosures or secrets. So so I hopefully I answered it on both sides of it for you. Okay. Um, question on Facebook. It's Joe Kane. Actually, same question on YouTube. I'm hoping the same person. Um, but what's up, Flipman? Just got started marketing in Los Angeles doing bandit signs. What do you think about voicemail message marketing? Um, I've done a little of it, a little of it. I haven't done enough of it to really give you an idea uh, of uh, if it works or not. Uh, you got to have the right system to play on that because it sent out the number of uh, voicemails that's needed in order to uh, get the response. Now, voicemail, what he means by that is that basically you have services out there, they'll call the number and they'll just drop a message in someone's voicemail box or whatever. So uh, I haven't done enough of it. I am, I intend to do so uh, this year, uh, probably this month uh, to, to see, you know, what, what, what type of response I can get from it. But definitely, uh, hey, you, you gotta think outside the box and uh, do some things, test it, you know, try to work out the quirks on it because it's all about getting your message out there the most uh, efficient uh, way you can with the best results, obviously, that you can. So, uh, but I know what you're talking about. I just haven't done enough of it to, uh, to really give you a good opinion on it. Okay, now you just answered the question about the seller that was under foreclosure. What about a reversible mortgage? Um, uh, is that the right title for, um, is that what they're called? Um, is that what they're called? Um, I know what he's talking about, but yeah, um, I actually had a deal like that once. Um, and uh, basically what those are is that, as he said, a reverse mortgage. I'm not sure that's the right title for it. I'm a little confused. Um, but I know what it is. I don't know if that's the right title for it. That's the right title for it. Reverse um, mortgage, yeah, I guess the same. Yeah, I think they have to be 62 or over. And uh, basically, if they have enough equity in their property, a lender would give them the money that they can, um, if I'm understanding this correctly, they'll give them the actual money. Say you owe 100, I mean, your house is worth 100. The lender may, and you don't owe anything on it, the lender may give you $40,000 to do whatever you want to with no payments. But after you die, within six months, either the family has to sell the property to pay them off or they get, or they retreat or they get ownership of the property. I think that's how that works. So if the opportunity presents itself, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're asking. If the equity is there, then, then yeah, uh, go ahead and make it happen or whatever. Um, I've thought about it in the sense of trying to wholesale properties that way, but I uh, looked into it and never, never uh, dove into trying to make sure that I'm crossing all my T's and dotting all my I's on it. So, uh, but yeah, I'm sure some people are doing exactly what I thought about doing. Hopefully I answered the question. I'm not sure what it, we just actually what I thought about it, I guess. All right. Kenneth wants to know, um, do you give the end cash buyer an inspection period? or ask them to close fast with no inspection? Where is this from? YouTube. Okay, so he said, um, do I do what now? Do you give um, the cash buyer an inspection period or ask them to close fast with no inspection? Yes, yeah, where I give an inspection period. Most of these guys that are serious, 
Um, they don't need that. They just they, they once they take a look at it, they know that if, if they want it or not. And uh, you know the, the response that you really are always looking for as soon as you can get a clear title. Those are the type of buyers you want to deal with. They start talking about inspection periods. Sometimes they'll be um, we're down on Instagram. Hold on. Sometimes they'll be um, brand new buyers, and they may want to do that. Uh, but a lot of times those may actually be wholesalers also when they start talking about inspection period, which is fine. I'll just ask them, are you trying to buy or are you trying to wholesale it? You know, but I'm not, in most cases, I won't let a wholesaler put a property of mine on the contract without the same earnest money that I'll, I'll get from a buyer, but I want it in my hand if I know they're wholesalers. Now I'll, I'll allow them to bring a deal to, I mean, a buyer to me, but I'm not going to let them tie my property. That's just me. You don't have to do it the way I do it, but that's just me. Okay, now we're back live on Instagram. Went down just for a moment there. Um, we've been getting some questions that were pretty akin to a newbie, which is awesome. Simone on YouTube has a question that most newbies ask. Answer this, should I ever tell a seller that I'm wholesaling? Well, I have an actual video on that, but I'm gonna explain it also. Uh, I think the video title is never ever say this to a seller when wholesaling houses. It's one of my older videos. I think I older videos, I think I did a more recent one on it. Uh, but uh, no, uh, just like you have uh, a couple of reasons why not. Number one, it's not important. Number two, just like you're trying to uh, understand it yourself and you may have already spent hours reading, watching videos or whatever, you still have tons of questions. Imagine trying to explain this to a seller in five minutes. People will shy away from doing business with you because they don't understand what business you're doing. Um, you know, so automatically they think you're trying to steal the house and I'll tell them quick, I can't steal your house. I can't pick it up and take it away. I can't, uh, I can't do anything with the title unless you sign it over. I'm sure it's some scam of my mind. I, I don't know how to do it. Uh, but um, so to answer your question, you are a cash buyer. You close in two to four weeks. You buy as is. You pay all clothing costs minus any, any unpaid taxes, mortgages, or liens. That answers pretty much all of their questions. It doesn't matter where the cash comes from, right? As long as you perform on what you all have agreed upon. So you never tell them, you never try to explain wholesaling to them. Never. Mm, Even never, 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 never. Never. All right. Facebook question from Tony. Tony Murphy. She has a question. Um, you got it up? Yes. How do you find houses through probate? What process do you use to contact the owner? Um, now probate is not my thing. All right. So depending on what state you, you are in, what county within that state would determine how, how easy I'm sure that will be. Sometimes you have to just literally go down to the courthouse to look it up, but then sometimes it's going to be available to you online as long as you know where to go. And uh, from there, you just have to reach out to them by either phone and or mail. Uh, now, I just personally, I don't like to go through, just me now, I'm not saying you do this, but I don't like to go through things that take a long process. That's why I love wholesaling, because I don't have to go, but there are deals there. But I let, if I'm going to target probate, but it's going to be the same time that I'm targeting people that are getting divorced, uh, tired landlords, out-of-town owners, um, whatever, through buying an absentee list, it takes care of all of that. So if there's a probate situation that it presents itself because of my marketing through mail to flipcom or direct mail in general, then I'll handle it. But I don't personally seek them out because of the process. And that would differ from state to state, uh, county to county or whatever. So, but the first, you know, a couple of ways, as you say, to find them, you still just going to start, you know, with the courthouse, whether online or offline. Okay. Um, sticking with Facebook, the very next question from Chris is the process the same in commercial properties and is it more profitable? 
The process is uh, as far as if you got a buyer and seller in place, yes, yeah, the same as far as putting a deal together. But to get to that point, day and night, day and night, as, way, as far as the way you evaluate properties, the players involved for the seller, buyer, broker, and yourself. In most cases, they're all investor minded, whereas with residential, you may be the only one investor minded <laughs> or whatever. So, and then as far as the more profitable, well, um, it, it's simple, man. Uh, uh, commercial properties cost more in general than houses. So that means the checks are going to be bigger uh, every, with everyone involved. The checks are going to be bigger. You know, most commercial properties, well, I'm not going to say most, but I'm, uh, yeah, comparing to houses, just rather, you know, this, it's just bigger numbers, man. You could always just six figures, seven figures, eight, they can go into nine figures. You know, the houses just don't, you just, they're not going to be in the plentiful as commercial when you start talking about those type of numbers or whatever. So to answer your question, it's going to be a lot more profitable. It's harder or whatever, but, but it's less competition. So a lot of gives and, uh, uh, it just depends, you know, depending on what we're talking about, housing and residential can be a lot faster in most cases as far as getting a check in your hand and a lot easier for the sake of as far as time frame. But with commercial, the checks are going to probably be a lot bigger. It's going to be less competition competing for those deals. So, um, so both have pros and cons. Okay. Um, just because it's a quick question, April on Facebook, does your one page contract work in any state? And to my newbies, new subscribers, Ty has made available to you the one page contract that works for the buyer and the seller in this wholesaling thing. He's been using it for years. It's yours to have. That's along with the closing details. It's along with the 200 plus videos. It's along with ooh, it's something else you give too. Hmm. Don't you have a script somewhere too? Maybe. Uh, no, no. Well, well, I have a video, one particular video. It's called Top Ten Questions Asked Sellers When Wholesaling Houses or whatever. But to answer a question, yeah, the country, yeah, the contract is being used all over the country. Understand what a contract. Um, not an attorney number one, but you and a seller can literally write up a contract at their kitchen table or the hood of your car, or their car or whatever. And uh, it can be binding, you know, as long as you're not performing anything legal, you know, you be, I want to buy your house at one, two, three main street on this date, seller name, John seller, buyer name, Ben wholesaler, find it, sign it, date it by this date, contract submit it. you know? So, but to answer your question, yeah. Okay, um, Jen on um, YouTube, which is who's been doing an excellent job of <laughs> answering questions I can't get to, obviously. <laughs> um, Ty, do you ask non-refundable deposit from the buyer whenever you have any deal? Well, normally, yeah, that's 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 just normal. Um, uh, as long as you can produce a clear title, if that title is clear, you're supposed to be able to keep that EMD, that earnest money deposit. Okay, Jay Rivera uh, just got a call on an inherited property and they sound like they really want out of the property. The ARV is 38K, should I offer five? Um, yeah, five or less for sure, for sure. Okay, so Jay, hope you got that. Let's see here, let's see what y'all got going on over here. Okay, Yoko, and speaking of that EMD, what is to be done with it? I showed a property to two, I'm assuming that's supposed to be wholesalers, and one didn't include an EMD, and the other offered $1,000 to be delivered at closing. I felt cheated both ways. What happened? Just explain it. Okay, so what is to be done with the EMD? I showed a property to two wholesalers and one didn't include an EMD and the other offered a thousand to be delivered at closing. Okay, not sh why he's showing it to other wholesalers. Maybe he meant buyers, but okay. Tell them what they can do with the EMD. When you give it to the seller, they get to keep it, 
regardless of if you close on a contract or not. And as long, you just said it, as long as the title is clear, if the buyer gives you one, you get to keep it if they fall through. Right. right. Correct. All right. But his the ending part, I guess what people are asking is, is it to be delivered at closing or do you get it at the time you sign the contract? Well, ideal is the time that you sign the contract. What, why would it be delivered at closing? <laughs> You're going to get all the money then anyway. Okay. Yoko, hopefully... Anything is negotiable. I'm just just for the sake of asking the question. Hopefully that answered your question, um, Yoko. wasn't quite clear. Okay. You ready? This is the first one I've actually seen all day. It's our Is It A Deal question by Jay Adams. And it's on YouTube, so you can't post it. Mm -hmm. What price would you try to get a house under contract for? The house has a 365,000 ARV. 150,000 is owed on the mortgage. Ooh, 25,000 back taxes and 10,000 in repairs. For one, the owner will not tell them what they want, so not motivated enough. But what would you offer? Uh, I'll, I would start at, uh, at one, uh, 180. Which covers just what's old, the 150, yeah. the 25, and the 10. Well, yeah. actually, and, if they, and, if they were, and, and if they were, well, 185, whatever, one that, uh, if they reject it, um, my follow up question would be uh, well, how close can you come to that amount and wait on a response? You know, so we'll go from there. Your goal is to get their least amount, whatever that is. That's your goal. You may not be able to accomplish that all the time, but if you feel like you've gotten that amount out of them, hey, you make a decision if the, you know, the numbers work or they don't or whatever. But that's why if they won't give you a price, I'm just going to give them a ridiculous offer, which is basically they told me 150, 25 or whatever, 35. Uh, so that's what you say, 185, or we're just going to say 190. So I'm going to offer what they owe on, you know, because there's enough equity there between 365 and 190. For it, for it to be a deal. So I can't go much higher than that anyway. So boom, there you go. All right. Um, Facebook question from Michael McClure. Flipman, is it worth getting involved with properties that have damage due to a fire? It's not a deal breaker, but you got to get that for next to almost nothing, right? Well, just using that same house we just talked about uh, for three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars, right? And if there was, if they didn't owe anything on it or whatever, then you can make a pay a hundred for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Had, depending on the, it still depends on the amount of fire damage, but you make a pay a hundred for that. But if it's a house that the ARB is a hundred, and it's it, again, it depends on how severe the fire damage, but you can easily get into forty thousand worth of pairs, and it's a minor fire. Or whatever so uh, so it just depends on how severe it is and what they are is so if it's a fifty thousand dollar house and the fire damage is pretty um just i'm not gonna say just uh, burned down but you know a room or two was destroyed then it's probably not going to be a deal there because the repairs are going to exceed what it's worth okay sticking with um facebook terrence has a question i think you got an answer for it What's an app I can use to find vacant house property information from my phone? Yeah, a good app that you can use is, uh, that I use is called LandGlide. That's L-A-N-D-G-L-I-D-E. Uh, I don't make anything off of that or whatever, but it's just a good app to uh, use. They have a free trial. It is a paid service, but I think they have like a seven-day free trial. Um, one of my more recent videos, I did a video demonstration of how to use it or whatever. So you can just go to my YouTube channel. I think you do a, a search for Land Glad, you should see the uh, video there. Okay, this question is from YouTube and I'm not laughing, but I, what was, I have to ask you what that little newspaper was at one point when when I know when I first started and used to have me go get it. Um, the there's Messenger there's or something there's like that? Huh? Rift and Nickel, or do you mean for the foreclosures? No, it was the messenger. What was oh, it? For the foreclosures? 
Yeah. Oh, but it also good. listed everything. It listed marriages, deaths, and all that. Yeah, but yeah. Franklin's question was, this may be a bit distasteful, but I was thinking about other ways to get leads. What do you think about checking the obituary section of the newspaper and researching the homes of the deceased? Well, one of the pe uh, first people that I followed as far as educating myself locally here, that's one of it. That was one of his methods of finding finding leads. Uh, what he would do, he would search the obituary and uh, see the address of the property. A lot of times they'll have that listed and see if there was a husband or wife that passed or did they have a husband or wife. And he would wait. And he would send something that week, probably before the funeral, hoping to catch family members there or whatever. Um, and uh, that was the same guy that, you know, that had the, the, uh, the famous quote of uh, every house is a step up for some for someone. So, you know, you can't get it tied up into I wouldn't live there or I would love to live there. You know, a deal is a deal or whatever. But you still have to go with what you're comfortable with. But I'm just saying you might leave a lot of money on the table by not wanting to get outside of your comfort zone. But what he would do is, is uh, he would send out the letter and, um, you know, like before the funeral or whatever, and he was just hoping that he could spark some interest there because sometimes it may be a situation where the uh, husband, if it was a, a, a husband that lost his wife, you know, he may want to do something immediate. Uh, according to him, I don't know if these are factual statistics or not, but men will move on to another woman within six months after a wife has passed on, whereas women, it may take them up to two years or more before they move on to another man. So he would find better luck with men. And then a lot of times when a man marries another woman, the, the other woman doesn't want to move into the house where the, the other wife lives. You, you see what I'm saying? So uh, whereas with us as men, we're more likely, and I'm just, just generalizing here, we're more likely to move. We'll, if a woman passed and maybe she, we, we don't want to have two houses, we may be more likely to move in with her versus the other way around. So, you know, um, I'm making a woman's husband pass or whatever. So, but anyways, but to answer this question, yeah. Not my thing, but yeah. Mm hmm Whatever. You ain't moving on no fast. Whatever. Um, you made me lose my train of thought with that jibble jabble. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's see here. I think that was a good question though, because uh, well, that's one of your things with that you say when people ask, "Can I flip? Can I wholesale in my area?" That's one of the do people get married? Do people get divorced? Do people die? Do people? So, hey, that's one of the things that would be a life changing event. Can't oh, yeah. no more. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see here. Richard says he subscribes to several obituaries online and gets the updates to his phone. That's <laughs> gay. Way, way to go. Let's see here. I'm trying to, y'all got some questions that, but they're all piggybacking because it's like y'all having a little conversation to yourself and I can't keep up. But Kenneth says if a property has back taxes owed, do I need to let the end buyer know about the taxes, even though their cash will cover that fee? No, nah, that's you, 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 um, no, nah, they, they don't need to know that. They asked the question to come up, but it's all going to come out in the closing. It just needs to be, uh, in most cases, the back tax is going to be paid by the seller. If they owe uh, 5,000 in back taxes and the price that you need to make the deal work is 25,000 with the seller. That means instead of them getting 25 at closing, they get 20. So that's irrelevant to the buyer. In most cases, everything can be negotiated. I know I say that a lot, but because, you know, there's no, no cutting, uh, cookie cutter approach to it because a, a, each situation is different or whatever. But generalizing here, uh, normally the, the seller will um, understand that the taxes have to come out of their proceeds as long as the numbers work for you and the price covers those outstanding liens, taxes, or mortgages. Okay. Okay, guys. 7.23 or so. Starting maybe a few minutes after the hour, 6 o'clock. So we've most definitely gone over. We do it every week to give you just a little bit more to make up a little time. What we do about this time is give you a little cleanup, house cleaning, um, reminding you about all the services available you, to you by our favorite, Mr. Todd Flipman Taylor. Um, keep in mind, we're here every Thursday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Tag a friend, bring a friend. Let's get gay to get some chicks. Um, he has the mail to flip. 
mail campaign, which is available for you, mailtoflip.com. Go there. It sends out postcards um, with photos of the homes to mailers. Don't forget, we have fun. Free contract at flipman.net. You can download for free. If you want a copy of the clothing detail sheet that I've used since 2000, probably four instead of three. Uh, free clothing doc. That's freeclothingdoc.com. Mm -hmm. No, you can access my 200 plus videos on YouTube. Anyone can take advantage of them. Many of you have. Uh, thanks for everyone that's watched my videos, commented there. Uh, these webinars, hopefully they are helpful. Uh, Dear you later is coming. You can still sign up for the affiliate that I'm uh, uh, involved with now, Rehab Evaluator, but a uh, day later, I'm still working on it. We're getting close. We're getting close. But um, hopefully, it's going to be something that you guys can find useful on your way of making this bread. So, uh, on with the questions, AP. Okay. Thank you. Because I, ooh, my mind just went, whew, I lost it. So, we'll go around all the platforms, take two questions from each, and we'll end this night out. Um, YouTube, YouTube's first. Corey says, keep them coming. Thanks for all you do. He says, buy his course. Talking about buy Ty's course. He is available to mentor you guys. If the videos aren't doing anything for you, you need a little hand on a little one-on-one, um, he is available. Go to flipman.net. Um, Corey says it's worth it. Yes. Let's see here. Welcome our web. I don't, do, 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 do. don't see any questions moving on. Facebook, Jamil McQueen asks, is it possible for me to learn to do title lien searches myself or is it better to pay for these services? In my opinion, it's better, better to pay for the services because at the end of the day, uh, title insurance is going to be supplied by the title company. They basically are saying, hey, we guarantee that the title search that we perform shows that this title is whatever. The norm is clear, of course. And so buyers seek that out because that's the insurance for them. If everything comes back up, they can get their money back. That's the way I'm understanding of how it works. So for you to learn how to do it yourself, unless you're going to open your own title company, I don't see a real a need for it. Okay. The next question was from Evan, um, still on Facebook. How do I find out if a house has liens? Um, well, that's basically what she was just asking. Title company. That's what title companies are for. Um, really, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I would recommend, unless you just want to pay for it yourself, wait until you get a buyer, because a lot of times they'll dictate where and, and who pulls title. So. Okay. Um, now I got my question on YouTube. Let's see here. Tessia, I just ordered my first list and postcards, and I'm waiting for them to arrive. How often would you suggest mailing to the same list? And how many times would you send mail? Example, every two weeks or, you know, two to four times, four times on that list? What, 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 what was their name? Tessia. Tessia, hopefully you use mailtoflip.com to do this, but, um, and they will handle the frequency on when you should mail to sellers. Uh, but if you were have, if you're doing it to yourself, um, depending on how large your list is, but I would probably mail to a particular list, you know, I mean, like you may have a list of a thousand, that thousand, I would probably mail every couple of months to them. Okay. Mark says, I've been going through as much as I can in YouTube with so many videos, not sure if you covered in context. How can you, I'm sorry, can you tell me? How paying taxes on your profit. I know your answer. Contact your CPA. Yeah, contact CPA on that, man. So many directions you can go with that. Um, I, I, that's something I really don't like to get into because um, I don't know enough about it. I got a good friend that handles that for me or whatever, whenever I listen to her or whatever, that uh, she's a uh, CPA or whatever, but she doesn't do taxes for a living because she works for a bank and she's a BP in their tax, she just does my tax or whatever. So, but I would recommend just seek out a CPA on that. All right. Um, another newbie question. Good one, um, Autumn Mary. I hope I said that right. So, if a buyer wants to see the house, 
I just have to contact the seller to do so. How do I let the buyer see the house that I have under contract? Um, well, if a, I'm assuming you have access to it in some form or fashion, even if you don't, you just if, if you have keys, just put a lockbox on it. And the, I'm assuming the property is vacant. If you don't, then you have to schedule with the seller each time that you go out. Let them know you're bringing out partners slash contractors to view the property, you know, if they won't give you access to it. So it's that simple. I would encourage you to always use your smartphone. If you don't have one, you're living on a rock. You need to get one if you're serious about this business, in my opinion. Um, and you should video the property. And how should they hold the camera, Adrian? Horizontally. Oh, uh, oh you don't have your camera. You can pick it up. I got one of mine. You want, not like this. People, they, and then you see black on this side and black on this side. You, you want, do you ever wonder why you see that on some YouTube video? Because they don't know how to properly hold their camera. Thank but you. You, you video your property and upload to YouTube. YouTube is free. That's the, you text that link to buyers uh, to, to let them see the condition of the property. That saves everybody time. They still want to see it after viewing that be a view in the uh, video that you've sent, then you probably have a, a potential deal there. So that saves you time. And uh, if you don't have the keys, that prevents you from uh, sending tire kickers where you're going to get tire kickers regardless, but that reduces the number of tire kickers that you would um, have to set up an appointment, take a look at the house or whatever. So. All right, Stacy. Lock boxes can be found at Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, most all home equipment. Um, Home repair type stores sell them. Yeah. That wasn't no phone. That was a tab. But why you being phone? It ain't no. It ain't no phone shop. These phones getting bigger and bigger. He said, "My big A A phone." Oh wow! No, oh, my God. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. Let's see here. On Instagram, Daisy is. Chaining a property right now. Does the third guy involved need to know what the property is under contract for? Who is the third guy? Maybe the third guy would be the buyer, the seller, the wholesaler, then the buyer, the third guy. Well, well they will. The buyer will eventually know. But as far as your negotiation, no. When you're negotiating, no. In my opinion. Okay, um, sticking with Instagram, actually, you must be posting in two different places. Let's see here. How do I find a reliable title company? Don't worry about that. I mean, I've spoken about this probably four times tonight. Wait until you get a buyer. You just don't even worry about that. That's, if you have a buyer and seller, getting the close is the least of your worries. Just worry on the hard part. A seller first, then a buyer. Then worry about closing. Don't worry about that because your buyers will dictate that in most cases. All right. I have made my rounds across all of our platforms. As always, I most definitely appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Um, hopefully we did a little better as far as Facebook cleaning up the feedback. Got some new toys going on around here. We're going to continue to work on making this live flipping our better for you guys. Um, hopefully we answered some Pretty good questions. I think we did really good at answering quite a few questions tonight, especially those target more at our newbies. Again, it's the beginning of the year. No excuse for you not to take advantage of all the information that is provided to you free of charge um, that you can most definitely take advantage of to get you a check in 2018. Um, 200 plus videos, all the websites, and we're here every Thursday, guys. Take advantage of that. You guys be good, be easy, answer those phones, put up those bandit signs, send out those letters, go to mail2flip.com and get you a campaign started. You got anything, Ty? That's it. You hey, you, you knocked it out the park, Road Tide. You were knocked That's it out right. the park. I'm not a Road Tider. Just because I live in Alabama, I'm not a Road Tider. But I did wear this color. I can't wear the I can't wear Alabama's logo and stuff on, on me. I just can't do that. But I, I I I got some haters over in the state of Georgia. I was actually over there Monday meeting with uh Renikia, and uh I was just amazed at the number of Georgia fans. All I could do is shake my head because I say, man, they just don't know what's coming. I, I'm objective. 
the tie, they are what they are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you live here, you got to respect it. You know, Nick Saban, what he's done, but enough of that. But anyway, so that's the best I could do is just wear the colors. I couldn't, I can't put the, the A on my chest or whatever. So, Screw and it. I get it. I'm a sometimey fan. One minute I'm for them, next minute I'm like, eh, whatever. I root for them when they win, I root for them when they lose. It just depends. But one moment, Veronica Brodnax, you are on Facebook. I did see your question. I lost it. She just uh, asked, why doesn't her question ever get answered? You got like 30 seconds to post it like right now and I will answer it. You will be my uh, let, 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 let me let me find her. Let me find her from. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, because I that's, can't. Hey, that, that's how you call out, Veronica. Let me answer it right Ooh, now. Y'all just been sweeping me, throwing me up under the bus. Yes, 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 yes. I don't see, I don't see it. It was at the very beginning and I lost it because I have I have tablet, laptop, laptop, phone going, and I was trying, and I, yeah, Facebook scrolls up so fast for me, and the comments, they disappear. Yeah, um, uh, can you repost it up, Ron? We'll, we'll hold on while you repost it. There it is, right there. There it is. You see it on the screen? You see it on the yes. screen? Yes, I do. All right. All right, this is Veronica's question. Hopefully, Veronica did not log out. Finding properties. Do you prefer mailing out letters or cold calling or door, door knocking homeowners, which gets better results? I would say uh, cold calling and direct mail. Are going, well, cold calling is going to probably be the, better than direct mail if you have the, you know uh, enough phone numbers, no matter where you're getting them from, I guess, uh, whether it's tired landlord or you bought an absentee list or whatever, provide a phone number for it. Um, cause that's going to be less expensive than direct mail. And then it's immediate also, So cold calling is going to be second. Um, I mean, it's going to be first out of those and then direct mail, mailerflip.com and then door knock. Door knocking is not going to be the best use of your time because you can't reach enough people, you know, with the number of people you're going to reach by direct mail or cold calling. So it's going to be far down the list of what I would suggest. Now, if you're a gator like that, then, then make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So, Veronica, we got your question in, baby. Come back next week. Get on her. You know what? To make her ask your question next week, too. All right? And I'll answer. <laughs> All right, guys. See y'all next week on the flip, flip side. Yeah. Coordinate. <laughs> <laughs>